James Caldwell, and uh, I chose to read the book True Enough, Learning to Live in a Post-Fact Society by Farhad Manju, because with all the fake news and alternative facts and uh, recent uh, politics uh, in America, I thought this book really uh, was relevant, so it really jumped out to me, um, and I wanted to learn more about this change in our society. Um, so True Enough gives an analysis of how Humans process information from a psychological standpoint, and particularly how the recent changes in technology has allowed media outlets to operate differently um, and cater to more uh, specific audiences, and how this in a way has diminished uh, objective facts in our society. And the author, uh, Farhad Manju, argues that in this modern world, with virtually unlimited choices of media, we begin to select our reality according to our own biases. We interpret evidence and expertise in a way that pleases us, and uh, how news outlets are moving away from uh, objectivity, ways they've uh, always operated in the past, towards a new way of uh, appeasing their audience in this culture of niches. Um, so yeah, from the psychological standpoint, the book um, has three main concepts, and one being selective exposure, uh, social reality, and selective perception. So first, uh, selective exposure um, being that indiv individuals tend to favor information that reinforces their pre-existing views while avoiding contradictory information. So an example of this is um, would be Republicans uh, viewing Fox News um, while choosing not to view CNN and MSNBC, um, and vice versa, Democrats choosing to view MSNBC or CNN or CBS and choosing to ignore Fox News. Um, so yeah, so um, media outlets now are have more partisan ties than they than they ever have in the past and. Um, we can kind of see it in our country. People um, choose the one that, that fits with their pre-existing beliefs, and, and then they continue to have those beliefs reinforced by these outlets without paying attention to the contradictory information out there. Um, so second, the social reality function. Um, people look to the others around them to determine the, what, what is reality. And uh, when many people around us feel that a certain thing is right or true, that group belief becomes an idea that we take as a fact. So if um, everyone around you is saying something, you're just going to take that as a fact, whether or not it's true, because we base our reality off what the people around us think. And lastly, um, selective perception. Uh, even when two people or groups of opposing ideologies overcome their tendency towards selective exposure, and they actually do choose to watch the same thing, uh, they still may end up being pushed apart from each other um, because what they are experiencing won't be the same thing. Each of them will have seen um, a vastly different thing based on their pre-existing beliefs. So the example I really liked in the book was... Um, uh, he used a Princeton uh, Dartmouth football game that was a famous game because, uh, you know, the Princeton fans all say that the, the refs uh, cheated and didn't call uh, penalties for the Dartmouth side. And, uh, you know, then the Princeton fans were saying it was a fair game. So, I mean, it was the same game. Everyone saw the same thing on the, on the field, but the, the two sides, uh, you know, you know, you can choose to view it in a different way based on what, based on what your pre-existing beliefs are. Um, it, it tends to change what you see and how you interpret things. Um, but yeah, overall, I really enjoyed the way the book was constructed. Um, there were so many examples like that Dartmouth-Princeton game and also um, the 2004 presidential election with uh, Senator John Kerry versus uh, President Bush and um, specifically the Swift Boat Veterans Campaign um, used to discredit Kerry and his Vietnam War record. Um, I thought that was very interesting, and and it was just yeah very relevant with all the, all of what we're seeing in uh, recent American politics. Um, so yeah, I, I'd recommend it to anyone. I think it's well worth the read uh, for for all consumers of media. And uh, thanks for your time.